Hi, I'm Paul Fuller. I have a passion for bird dogs. This is my partner, Dylan. He has a passion for birds. Together, we're gonna share our passion with you. Welcome to Bird Dogs Afield. Hi, friends. You know, we've talked a lot about how Bird Dogs Afield is really a video magazine. We follow the seasons. We started out back in the spring with early dog training, teaching the basics, the woe command. We progressed through the summer. We've taught our dogs to be steady to wean and shot. We've taught them to honor point. Now it's time to get into training our dogs on wild birds. And do I have a treat for you folks. We went up to northern New Hampshire. We met Dave Hughes of Pennsylvania, Lloyd Murray of Long Gone Setters, and did we see some incredible dog work. Now, if you're not familiar with these gentlemen, I'm gonna read, and this is the first time I've ever read any, anything on bird dogs afield, but I just wanna make sure I get it right. Dave Hughes, he's the professional trainer from Pennsylvania. He's a, been a grouse dog trainer for almost 40 years. He's won the Grand National Grouse Championship 10 times, which has never been done before has won close to 100 grouse and woodcock championships, more than anyone else ever, has several thousand placements and field trials, has also judge trials around the country, and he also loves to hunt over good pointing dogs. He's not just a trainer, he's also a hunter. Now, Lloyd Murray and Long Gone Setters, the Long Gone Setter Kennel was started by Lloyd's grandfather, R.B. Bernie Murray, in 1916. Bernie had a love affair with woodcock and grouse shooting and did that over his champion dog, Long Gone Stokely. Long Gone Stokely provided the foundation for the breeding which continues today. In northern New Hampshire, in the past 10 years, Long Gone Setters have won the Hardin Foster Award twice, which is awarded to the top cover dog, which is for grouse and woodcock in the United States and Canada. Those dogs were eight-time champion Long Gone Agnes and her daughter, five-time champion Long Gone Madison. And you'll see Long Gone Madison in these, venue, these uh, episodes. And again, she's a five-time champion. Both of these dogs have also won the Simator, I hope I pronounced that right, award for the top English setter grouse dog in the country. So you will see a dog that has won the award for the top grouse dog in the country, top English setter grouse dog in the country. The credentials go on and on for both Dave and Lloyd. Uh, let's just say for cover dogs, you're not going to see any better work. Maybe this is, I, and I, I'm going to uh, crow a little bit here, maybe this is the best video of cover dog work ever recorded. I'm not sure, but just maybe it is. You're going to have fun. Watch carefully. We have three separate episodes, so watch all three. Thanks. Well, Lloyd, how are you? Good, good to glad meet, to meet you. you. Glad to be here, nice. Dave. I've I've heard about uh, you a lot, and it's it's a real pleasure. Uh, we're here with uh, Lloyd Murray, and he's the owner and uh, breeder here at Long Gone Setters, and it's it's certainly a well-known name in both the field trial business and hunting. Uh, a great setter line. It's known throughout the world, and of course, Dave is is a legendary trainer. Everyone knows Dave Hughes. He's, he's known throughout the country in both the field trial business and dog training business. We're real fortunate to be here with these gentlemen. We're going to go out in the field. We're going to learn a lot. We're going to see some great dog work. I'm excited. Thanks, Lloyd. Okay, Paul. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. Yes, sir. All right. She's back in Boston. So if you slip in there, you'll see him to the left. You might get a good shot on that. You see what I'm talking about? You're all right. Keep keep going. Let's poke her straight. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now he had his head turned. I'm thinking we could put a bird up. You go around. I'm just going to stand here and watch the dogs. 
but I figured that Paul could get a good shot here with one point and been here five minutes, the other dog found her for us, come in and backed. If, if you don't get it up, I'm going to swing to the right and come up towards you. But I'm hoping you can grab this bird. Okay, I'm swinging to the right and come in to you. Buggers out in this thick stuff. Hey, that bird's right towards you. Yeah, I know. He's. I think it escaped on us. Being that. The, There it goes. Whoop. You should have got that on the sound as close as I. I think I got it on the sound. Yeah, yeah. you had to have as close yeah. as I was on it. Well, she had her head cocked that direction. Yeah. yeah. Well, see, there's a little, little breeze coming through there. And we're teaching these dogs when they smell hot scent, they've got to stay there till we find them. Yeah. I mean, that, that's the object of field trialing is to have quality dogs. And if, these, if we had a dog that was going out and just rooting and chasing at three years of age after the training session through Puppy Derby, it's got to go. I wouldn't want to breed to it, and I wouldn't want a hunter to have it. And that's, you know, that's why we work this way. And that's the object of field trailing, to improve the breed. And this look for this dog's mother, both of these mothers in the Michigan Woodcock Championship for 52 minutes one year. Found the dog with two birds in front of her. Yeah. My goodness. <laughs> oh, yeah. Of course, she was out of contention because she was gone too long. Yeah, but I'd rather have that than one, one you to hear the bell stop and move, stop moving. There goes your bird and the dog's chasing it. That's a poorly trained dog when you have that. It's fine with hunters. They want their dogs to break. I don't, you know, that's fine. But my viewpoint is they got to stay there till you flush that bird. Now our dogs are taught they have to stay, but a hunter doesn't have to do that. But he better stand there till you flush, and that's that makes a better dog. And well, there's no downside when you come to hunting to have your dog steady like. Well, that. I could have shot the bird. Yeah. Say I knock. Okay, the question people will ask. Well, you hit the bird, now you can't find it in the cover. Yeah, I can, because these dogs are taught to go point it dead, and that's what I'll do. So I'm, I'm just saying that those are the views that we work towards. These dogs weren't trained in one day or one month. There's been a lot of hours put in these dogs, and that's what the problem with a lot of amateur hunters. They take their dog home, throw them back in the kennel, and they ought to be taking them out. Dog can have a month or two rest, but they ought to start 20 minutes, build them up, where you can hunt in the covers, get a little bird work, you can buy permits to do it, and so forth. You're not going to destroy. Don't go out the whole month of June. Go out the end of June after the birds are hatched out, and then you'll have a better hunting season doing this it that way. This dog has heard two shots go off already, stayed there. He's had the whistle blown to try to get him to move, and we still couldn't get him to move. Right. So he's getting to be what we call a finished product. And he's, and he's three years old, so you know that, you know, that's the breeding that we go towards, natural qualities. So they want to please the person who's handling them. So I'm just giving you a viewpoint on that, all right? Good boy. You. Okay, and I had a dog called Kingway. He won three championships, three-time runner-up. Uh, he was a kind of grouse dog in Pennsylvania when I hunted with him quite a bit. He had a lot of horseback shooting dog wins and derby wins. But the secret with him was, if he was on a ridge and heard a grouse get up, 
He'd stop and observe where it would go. Ten minutes later, you'd find him on the next ridge with that grouse pen. That's an excellent grouse dog. He knew how to handle them. He knew where the direction that bird went. So when you're killing a lot of grouse over a smart dog, they know where to go to find them. And, you know, some guys will say, well, he marked the bird. I'm hunting. I don't care. He knew how to go find that bird. I don't know. Oh, my there's no bird there. <laughs> yes, she and, uh, Yeah, I knew that was coming. But she's, she looks like she's back. Well, he's pulling scent. Oh, yeah, there's a bird here. He can walk right by her. You want mine? Nope. Whoop. Yeah, I'm trying to pull the wool on Lloyd, but he won't let me do it. That bird's got to be right over there, boy. I'm trying to get up, see if we can get the sound of it going out. <laughs> There's a bird here. You ought to see him pulling the set, but I'm not finding it. There it goes. There you go. Oh, that was nice and tight, right under the tree here. Yeah. I seen him pulling. I, I may have. No, no, I went in this way and then I came back this way. You might have got that one. I may have got that, that bird. Yeah. That right came, over my head. came right there. Ooh. That's all right, Maddie. Oh, that was in the pot. That's, that's, that's called a divided fine. That's called a divided fine. <laughs> the reason I say divided because her bell will stop first. And he didn't see her. He came in. But that made her even pose better because she was, you know, honoring him too. So, I got so to lay it to this. So this was the pointing dog. No, no. That's called divided. All right. Her bell was stopped, but I think what happened is he pointed, she was back, and he moved up. So I'm just playing game with Lloyd today. Oh, it's a mind see, game. What I think happened is she was stopped. I heard him stop. Then I heard him start up and stop. And I, that's why I said I'll take it back because I figured he popped it. Yeah. Yeah, that's all right. It sounded like that. Well, I think these birds are running because we pounded them yesterday. Yep. But, I mean, we're still getting, we're yep. getting good work with them. And that's, you know, in a field trial, you might run this course twice in one day. And they got to learn how to handle those, too. Even hunting. You always keep going back to the same cover if it's loaded with birds. All right. Bo Boston's already been through here. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Ooh. Where is Boston? Yeah. Oh, he's, he's buried right Yeah, this video right there. Oh. Here's the honoring dog. Buried yeah. I guarantee you, that's where that bird is. I give you that. Like no, I, I'm just. Like I know it's over there. Let me get on that log. Oh, be careful. That log will hold me. It's been a few years since you, you were in gymnastics. Yeah. But I'm known as agile and hostile. Ooh. There it goes. Oh, I see it. Yeah. Yep. That sounded like grass if you got that on the sound. 
It didn't whistle, it went out like a grass. Woo! Yeah. That well, I flitted across there and she knew it, but she was going to say, you flush it for me. And a championship, I had a flushed. I can't believe you didn't hear that. Yeah, but it came out. If, if you hear that, it sounds like a grass. There was no whistle. It was just a And most judges would say that was a grass, the way it flopped out of there. It's wet from running in these wet weaves. Why don't you grab her? I'll grab him. Which way you want to go? Right behind us and across the thing and under the pines and up. Okay. Come here, heel. Yeah. You heel. Yeah. Heel. Heel. Yeah. Come here, heel. You take your dog out of heavy stuff, and you, if you wanted to go to big open horse country, Correct. your dogs know how to. Well, what you, what you, what I like to do is when they're puppies and derbies, I hunt them in the heavy cover, but I alternate. I'll take them in big farm fields and put a bird on the edges. They run all the way down. They find that bird. The next day, the bird's out a little further. Pretty soon, they learn. A smart dog learns to take that edge the whole way down. When it hits the end, there'll be a bird there. So they acclimate. When they see the open fields, they run out of the country. When they come to the woods, they got to hunt to cover and quarter. I, you know, I use this example. George Tracy and myself had a, and George is a very popular trainer. We had conversation with an owner one time, and I said, and George agreed with me, and I said, I could take my top five dogs and give to George, and I could take his top five in a matter of a month I could probably win with them in the woods, and he would win with them horseback. The difference is the training. That's all it is. Yeah. He, he's a, he's a horseback. And right? he's totally horseback. Okay. Most people know George. Yeah. Right. And I think he would agree with me on that, because when he's working, say he's down south, he goes into the thickets with those young dogs, and he kills birds over them. Same thing I'm doing here. Yeah. But he's in a different circuit than I am. He runs horseback, and the bigger the better, you know, and they train him to do that. But, like I said, I could take his top five, work them in the woods, and he'd take mine and push them in the fields. There's no difference. It's how you train a smart dog. You don't want a dumb dog. You want a smart dog. Perfect. All right, folks, that concludes episode one of Bird Dogs, Pointing Dogs with Dave Hughes and Lloyd Murray. Don't miss episode two and three. Thanks. All right, all right. Dylan and I hope you enjoyed this episode of Bird Dogs Afield. Friends, this is your complete video magazine on upland bird hunting and pointing dogs. Check back frequently on myoutdoortv.com for future programming. Also, you'll find additional information on our website, birddogsafield.com. Friends, also support our sponsors. They help make this possible. Dylan and I hope to meet you in the field someday. Until then, good hunting, hunt safely. Bird Dogs Afield, brought to you in part by Native Performance Dog Food, the official dog food of Pheasants Forever and Quail Forever. Irish Setter by Red Wing Legendary Performance, bred for sport and available at Kittery Trading Post or your favorite Irish setter dealer. RST, manufacturer of short chamber, low pressure shot shells. And On Point Kennel, providing the finest in dog training equipment.